So now that we understand what's happening in the market and what uh, insurers are doing, um, I'm joined by Greg Wagon from the 90 to discuss how clubs can manage their risks better to present themselves in, uh, to insurers to get the best possible result. Um, Greg's had over 20 years risk management experience. The 90 are experts in risk assessment, risk management, risk training. So we've got the right man in the room to talk about this. So Greg, in my experience as a broker, the major risks for clubs are water ingress through storm or surface water, um, fires caused by electrics, uh, cooking fires, and cash management. I think uh, that's what insurers are really looking at when they're assessing the risk of a club. Do so you agree on that? Absolutely. Yeah. So we might cover off on two of those in, in this episode of the series and talk about um, how clubs can um, manage their risk from water ingress to start with and then we'll move on to uh, electrical fire. So what can clubs do to manage their, their risk for storm and, and water ingress? I think the main thing with storm and water ingress is really looking at uh, the guttering, so making sure that there's a regular inspection program in place for uh, roof guttering, maybe you can put leaf guards in place, uh, also making sure that the, uh, the down pipes are regularly flushed as well. A lot of clubs do have box gutters and they cause a, a big issue, especially with heavy rainfall, so the water backs up in the box gutter and, uh, and works its way back into the building. So we'd probably recommend maybe a three monthly program where someone gets up on the roof and make sure that all, all the, uh, the gutters are cleared and all the down pipes yeah. are being flushed as well. Yeah. In terms of the surface water, uh, really just sort of looking at making sure that all the ground gutters, uh, the, sorry, the ground drains are kept, uh, kept clear as well. So that might be someone coming out and just uh, doing some maintenance on that on a regular basis too. What about um, inspecting the condition of the roof? That's something really important. Yeah, well. definitely. I think that would be something that a, a roofer or a licensed builder should uh, should get up and have a look at it on a regular basis, just to make sure that all the sheeting's in place correctly uh, and everything's tied down uh, well as well. Yeah. Uh, thinking about uh, wind. So that would be an annual or maybe every two years. I mean, it wouldn't be as regular as the maintenance of the gutters. Definitely not. I think on an annual basis, maybe every two years. Yeah, yeah it should be relatively enough. Okay, good food for thought there. Electrical fires, what can clubs do to, to manage that risk? Yeah, I think the big thing here is thermal imaging. So yeah. making sure there's an annual thermal imaging program in place. Yeah. And that'll detect issues, not just in the switchboards and distribution boards, but further up throughout the, the wiring as well. Yeah. Um, so that's really the big one, getting that thermal imaging report and then making sure that anything that's identified in that report is then addressed uh, by an electrician straight away. Okay, um, and how often should they get a thermal imaging report? Definitely annually, I think. Annually? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot, and it's just a really good preventative maintenance program, preventative maintenance strategy for clubs to do. Okay. Um, test and tag, another big one on that uh, yeah. front. So just making sure that uh, that leads are tested and tagged on an annual basis as well. Um, okay. So annually is uh, fine for that. So a licensed electrician could do all of this for clubs. Absolutely, yep. Uh, test and tag can be done by someone who's just authorised or certified to do test and tag. So that doesn't need to be a licensed electrician. Another thing for clubs to think about is where they do have electrical boards uh, in cupboards throughout various levels, just making sure that there's a smoke detector within the cupboard as well. So in the event of a fire or, or parking on the board, it'll be picked up really quickly uh, and notified back to the fire brigade before it actually creates a bigger fire within the building itself. Excellent recommendation. One of the things I see regularly is clubs storing things in those rooms. Yeah. So that's a no-no. Yeah, absolutely, we see that a lot. Uh, yeah. So it'd be nice if clubs kept those rooms completely clear uh, yeah. with no combustible items in there at all. Um, a lot of times it'll just be boxes or, or archives or paperwork or something yeah. like that. So making sure that all of that's clear um, is a good thing. It's also important to have the fire extinguisher out of the switch room. Uh, or, or the electrical cupboard rather than inside because you don't want to have to go inside the switch room to get the extinguisher where the fire is. So have it outside when you open the door you can then start to extinguish Excellent the fire. Um, okay, well hopefully you've got something out of that and hopefully you can join us for the second part of the series when we're going to talk about cooking fires and cash handling. Thanks for joining us.